Welcome to this Pharos Expert training video. This video will show you around the software and explain common programming features, including the concept of spaces. In part two, we'll cover the simple ways in which Expert tackles more advanced use cases. Whatever your installation, Expert makes light of it. Let's have a look at this project file. It resembles a small lobby, a reception area with an art piece on the left and a waiting area on the right. Expert software will always show the canvas. The canvas can display one or more background images with options to adjust the image scale and visibility of grid lines. At the bottom of the screen, you'll find the Tools menu. The selected tab will change according to the item selected on the canvas, showing the relevant tools for the selection made. Select a tab to manually change the selection. Navigate to the Home tab to find additional help and instructions. To the right of the screen is the Property Editor, which changes according to the item selected on the canvas. You can also choose to show a browser, which lists all of the items in your project. At the top of the screen is the toolbar. From here, the property editor and tools menu can be shown or hidden according to your preference. This is also where you'll find tools for working on the canvas, including zoom, tools to quickly enable grid lines and snapping to grid, as well as an option to filter items shown on your canvas. Click the add item button to start adding items to the canvas. Selecting fixtures presents us with a list of fixtures used in this project. Click the Configure Fixture Library button to customise the types of fixture included in this list. There are options to search your local library or the Pharos Online Fixture Library. Expert supports RGB, white, tunable white, RGBW and more in both 8 and 16-bit control resolution. Additionally, Pharos Expert supports DALI fixtures, including Type 8 tunable white and colour. Now that we have our project's fixture library, we can start adding fixtures to the canvas by selecting the fixture type and clicking on the canvas in the desired position. To add multiple fixtures in a rectangular array, straight line or circle, click and drag your mouse on the canvas. The property editor will show options including the shape, size and spacing of the array. Notice how the canvas status bar shows relevant instructions for the action being performed. To patch a fixture, drag and drop the fixture from the canvas to the patch tab in the tools menu. When shown, fixtures can also be added to the patch from the browser. For faster patching, drag and drop multiple fixtures in one go. By default, Expert's onboard DMX and DALI ports are shown. Additional universes can be added using the eDMX protocols ARTNET, SACN and KINET by clicking the Configure Outputs button in the Patch tab. Add a universe by selecting the required protocol, clicking Add and entering the desired universe number. Clicking Finish applies your changes. If you are working with DALI or DMX fixtures with RDM compatibility, you can scan the controller's network and commission your fixtures directly from Expert Software using the Discover tool on the right-hand side of the Patch tab in the Tools menu. Once discovered, these fixtures will populate the patch. From here, discovered fixtures can be dragged onto the canvas or associated with an existing fixture on the canvas. In Expert, fixtures are organized using spaces, which can be nested in a parent-child structure. Each parent space can have multiple child spaces, and each child space can itself contain further child spaces. Thanks to this hierarchical structure, a space's intensity can be changed by adjusting the intensity of the space itself or by adjusting the intensity of the parent space. Every project contains the project space, a space which encompasses the entire canvas. A space can be added using the Add Items button in the menu bar and selecting Space. Click and drag on the canvas to add a rectangular space or draw a polygon by clicking to create a sequence of points. Spaces have a name, number and colour configurable from the property editor when the space is selected. Spaces can be locked from accidental adjustment by right-clicking and toggling the Enable Space Edits option. Double-clicking the space will zoom to show that space. Double-clicking the project space will zoom to show the full canvas. Every fixture belongs to exactly one space. When creating spaces or adding new fixtures to the canvas, expert software automatically adds fixtures to the space in which they are positioned. If required, the space a fixture belongs to can always be manually adjusted under Placement in the Property Editor for the selected fixture. In Expert, scenes are created for a certain space and are shown with an icon on the canvas. Double-clicking a scene icon presents options for editing the scene and shows a preview of the scene contents on the canvas. Each scene controls its space, and if the space contains child spaces, these will be controlled too. Let's add a scene. We can add a scene by clicking the Add Items button in the menu bar and selecting Scenes. There are three types of scenes available, Static, Dynamic and Timeline. Let's select a static scene first. In a static scene, each fixture is controlled individually. Note that opening the editor selects all fixtures in a space by default. 
It's also possible to select more than one fixture to quickly set colours on multiple fixtures. When a scene icon on the canvas is double clicked to edit, the tools menu at the bottom of the screen shows options for colour temperature, colour and intensity, which apply to the selected fixtures. Expert also supports individual control of emitters in multi-parameter fixtures. It's also possible to set the fade time of a scene from the property editor. This is also where the name of a scene can be set. With a dynamic scene, you can select an effect from our extensive library. It's possible to filter effects by category to easily find the right effects for your project. When a dynamic scene is started, it will continue to play until another scene is selected. The last type of scene is Timeline. When a timeline scene is added to the canvas, a timeline is displayed on the bottom of the screen. From here, click the Add Preset button, then click and drag on the timeline to place the timeline preset. The timeline name and length can be altered from the property editor. This is also where you'll find options for effect type, effect properties and crossfade when the timeline preset is selected. If a timeline applies to a space with child spaces, each child space will appear as a row in the timeline, conveniently allowing different looks for different spaces that will play back in perfect synchronization. Playback in child spaces has priority over parent spaces. Each space can have a maximum of one scene active at any time. This can be any of your programmed scenes or the off scene that is automatically created for every space. A space can also be overridden by scene programming from a parent space. Once created, scenes can be controlled directly or by using tags. Tags introduce the idea of a state and are useful for many projects. Tags will be covered in more detail in a later video. For the purposes of this video, we'll focus on triggering scenes directly. A common scenario for most projects is the use of scheduling. Expert software includes an easy to use graphical scheduler which can be opened from the control tab in the tools menu. Click the add new event button at the top right of the configure schedule window to add an event. From here, select scene and the space in which a scene is to be scheduled. For each space, expert software shows the scenes available, including the off scene. Once a scene has been selected, click Next to set the event's time. From this screen, it's possible to define the event's start and end date and time, as well as set a regular occurrence. As well as date and time, it's also possible to schedule events based on astronomical events, like sunrise and sunset. During scheduling, the scene will be displayed in the calendar view to the right of the screen, showing the colour of the space with which it is associated. If your project uses astronomical scheduling, it's important to set the location of the controller correctly. This can be done by clicking Set Location in the Control tab of the Tools menu. From here, you can choose from a list of cities, or manually set latitude, longitude and time zone for the project. Click Commit to save your changes. Expert software offers an easy way to simulate your programming. Simply click the Play button above the Tools menu and the canvas will update to show programming playback. From here, it's also possible to set the time and date you want to simulate, as well as adjust playback speed. During simulation, the scene browser indicates which scenes are active. Clicking the play icon will perform a manual override for the selected scene. If a controller has been associated with your project and the project file has been uploaded to the controller, it's also possible to simulate your programming live on your fixtures. You can learn about controller connection to expert software in the expert hardware setup video in this series. This is the end of the first expert training video. We recommend watching our Software Introduction Part 2 to learn more about other key features offered in Pharos Expert, as well as our other videos in this collection to learn more about specific features, as well as information and guides on how to get your expert hardware set up.